you've been watching this channel recently, you'll know that Nvidia and Scan have sponsored a few videos so I can talk about Nvidia Studio program. To show off the power of Nvidia Studio devices, they sent me this, an RTX 3090 Ti. But I don't get to keep this one unfortunately because I'm going to send it to one of you guys. But there is a catch, you're going to have to send me some artwork first because we're going to have a little competition. So here's how it's going to work. You'll have until the end of August to submit some artwork to me on the theme of space. Now this is a pretty open competition, you can make anything you want on that theme. Planets, nebulas, black holes, aliens, spaceships, I don't care, that part's up to you. Now you can submit a still image or an animation for this, but it does have to be made primarily in a 3D package, none of this AI generated crap. You can of course use any 3D package you want though, Blender, Maya, Cinema 4D, whatever you're most comfortable with. I'll be making a thread on my Facebook group and I'll be making a separate channel on my Discord server where you can submit your artwork and like I said you'll have until the end of August to get that work in. This competition is open to anyone in SCAN's normal shipping area, that's the UK and the EU. Unfortunately, if you don't live in one of those areas, we can't ship to you. In fact, it would be helpful when you enter the competition if you included your real name and the place where you live. The artworks are going to be judged on three main criteria, idea, execution and style. That means that even if you're not the best 3D artist, you can still win. If you have a great idea, something that's really funny or really different, you're still in with a chance. Once all the submissions are in, I'm going to make a video where I'm going to judge them and pick out the best one. I'm also going to enlist the help of some other Blender creators that you might know to help me pick out the winner. Of course, I'm going to be making my own little entry just to show off what this GPU can do, but to get things kicked off, I thought it'd be fun if we started with a little space tutorial today. Okay, so setting up a basic star field is easy. In the world shader, I'm just going to add a color ramp and a noise texture node. I'm going to connect the factor to the ramp and I'll plug that into the color of the world shader. If we set the ramp to constant mode and we move the white bar up a little bit, that gives us some white blobs in space. Now if we turn up the roughness and we set the scale on the noise shader at something like 500, we get a nice little field of stars. We can control the number of stars by sliding the white handle on the colour ramp and we can change the brightness by adjusting the background strength. Now that's in place, let's make a little asteroid belt. I'm going to start by adding a cube into the scene and I'm going to press Ctrl and 4 which will give us 4 levels of subdivision. Make sure you go into the subdiv settings and increase the render amount to match the viewport. You'll also want to right click on the cube and shade it smooth. Next, we're going to add a displacement modifier and we're going to select a new texture. Go into the texture properties and select the cloud texture type. You can play with the texture settings and the displacement strength to get loads of different types of effects. You can also extrude out some faces on the cube to give a little bit of variation to the asteroid and make it slightly less spherical. On top of that, I'm going to add another subdiv modifier, this time set to two levels, and we're going to create a new displacement modifier. I'm also going to add a new texture for this displacement modifier, just to add some smaller details. Blender has loads of different noise pattern types for textures. Just play around with them until you find one that looks good. I think I used the clouds set to improved Perlin mode for my final version. So now we're going to need some light in the scene. In space, everything is lit just by one single sunlight usually, so let's add a sun lamp. You'll notice that the position of the sun lamp doesn't actually make any difference, it only accounts for the rotation of the light. I've got a few little weird artifacts here, so I'm just going to add a smooth modifier to the asteroid mesh. Now we need to give the asteroid a texture. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can just select the principal node and use Ctrl Shift T to add several different textures at once. I'm using this rocky image set from textures.com. Right now this UV map looks kind of bad, it's stretched and weird and we need to fix it. I want this to generate semi-procedurally because we're going to have lots of different shape asteroids. So what we're going to do is change the mapping type from UV to generated. Then I'm going to go to the image settings and change the projection type from flat to box. Now this does look a lot better but we still get some seams around the hard angles. We can smooth that out just by increasing the blend factor to 1. I'm going to make this same change to all three textures in the material. Ok, now let's set up a basic camera move. I'll change the focal length of the camera to 90mm or higher and I'm going to move the camera to above the location where I want the asteroids to be and I'm going to set a keyframe. I want to replicate the typical sci-fi establishing shot where the camera starts off just looking into space before panning down onto a planet. 
So for reference, when the camera gets to the bottom, I'm going to add a keyframe and then I'm going to move a sphere into place, which will eventually be our planet. Okay, so now let's generate a belt of asteroids. I'm going to make a really long stretched out plane and I'm going to move it to the side of the scene so it's just out of sight of the camera. I'm going to give that a particle system and I'm going to make sure that the particles are firing in the right direction. In this case, I have to flip the plane 180 degrees on the Z axis. Now I'm going to turn off all of the forces for the particle system and gravity so that the particles just fire out straight. To get a rough idea of how this is actually going to look, I'm going to go into the render settings of the particle system and I'm just going to use this base asteroid that we've made as the particle object. You can see that all the particles are facing the exact same direction right now and they aren't actually moving forward. We can increase the normal velocity to give it some forward speed and we can increase the random amount so they just fire off in slightly different directions. Now we just need to turn on rotation and play with the settings a little bit until it starts to look much better. I'm going to grab the camera animation keyframes and move them along a couple of hundred frames just to ensure that the particles have enough time to spawn underneath the camera before the camera starts to pan down. Now we're starting to get a pretty decent looking shot but we do have some issues. The shadows of the asteroids are visible on the planet which breaks the illusion that this is large and far away and the white plane of the emitter is actually casting a reflective light onto the dark side of the planet. Now we can select that plane and go into the object settings then turn off the diffuse and shadow bounces for the plane and its particles. That will fix this issue but it gives us another problem. Now our asteroids aren't casting any shadows including casting shadows onto each other. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is move the camera and the planet further down at the end of the animation. I'm trying to ensure that there's a section of the animation where the planet and the asteroids aren't visible at all. Now I just have to set a keyframe on the particle system's shadow visibility. So they'll cast shadows when they're visible on the asteroids, but once it transitions to the planet, the shadows will turn off and they won't cast onto the planet. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got so far. I'm going to turn on the excellent optics viewpoint denoiser for this, which is fast enough to basically preview the scene in real time. Everything's looking pretty good now, let's improve those asteroids a little bit though. I'm going to move the main asteroid over to the side of the shot and I'm going to make several other copies of it. In edit mode, I'm going to change some of these copies so they all look slightly different. Then I'm going to select all of the copies and I'm going to use Ctrl G to add them to a group called Rocks. In the particle system settings, I'm going to remove that asteroid object and I'm going to replace it with this collection that we just made called rocks. Now we have three different types of asteroid instead of just one. And because they're all facing different directions and they're different sizes, it makes them all look completely different. I want one asteroid to fly a little bit faster and closer to the camera compared to the others. So what I'm going to do is move that first asteroid that we made that isn't in the group next to the camera and we're going to add a few keyframes so that it just flies past the screen as the camera pans down. Make sure you right click on the timeline for any animated objects like this and set the interpolation to linear, otherwise it will slow down at the start and end of its movement. So now the asteroid is zooming past the camera, but if we render out a frame of this, you'll notice that it doesn't have any sense of movement. So I'm going to enable motion blur and just lower the mount slightly so it's not too blurry as it goes past. If we re-render this, you can see that things are looking much nicer. The RTX 3090 Ti supports NVIDIA's GPU accelerated motion blur. So even with hundreds of moving objects like this, the motion blur only adds about one second to the render time, which is frankly nothing. I want to add a little trail of dust coming off this asteroid as it flies past the camera, which is fairly easy to do. I'm just going to select it and do a search for quick smoke. Then in edit mode, I'm going to change the bounding box's shape that it covers completely the path of the asteroid as it goes past the camera. I'm going to increase the resolution of the domain and I'm going to turn on adaptive domain, which will just speed things up a little bit when we come to bake this out. Then I'm going to enable dissolve and noise in the volumetric settings. I'm also going to set up the cache for baking. Now once that's baked out, we just need to go into the volume material settings and lower the density a little bit and give it a slight little bit of brown color. That's going to make it look like a nice little subtle trail of dust just coming off the asteroid. Finally, we can add a touch of variation to the asteroids by just changing their color slightly. Select one of the asteroids from the group we made earlier and go into the material settings. 
add a mix RGB node, a color ramp, and a particle info node. We can plug the random output of the info node into a color ramp, and then we can mix that in with our base texture. Now we can just select a few different colors on the ramp and it'll automatically add a little bit of color variation to all of the rocks. Try to keep this pretty subtle, you don't really want a multicolored asteroid field. Or maybe you do. I'm not the cops, so you can do what you like. Okay, now the asteroid field is looking pretty good, let's move on and finish that planet. You can use pretty much whatever texture you want for the base of a planet, or you can do it completely procedurally. I just grabbed this rusty metal texture from my folder. I'm going to be using this as the base colour, and I'm also going to run it through a really low strength bump node. I have basically no plan for what I'm doing here. Whenever I make stuff like this, I just grab a bunch of Musgrave textures, noise textures, colour ramps and mix nodes, and I start just bashing it all together. I find that if you set the colour ramp mode to constant, it often gives you an effect that looks quite a lot like a planet. You end up with all these different geological zones, which kind of reminds me of those dark patches that you get on Mars. Once you're happy with the surface of the planet, you can move on and make the clouds. Now these are actually really easy to do. If you look on the internet, there's quite a few places where you can get cloud textures. You just need to load one of these into your material and use it as the alpha channel of the principal shader. Finally, let's add a little bit of atmosphere to this planet. Just duplicate the sphere and scale it up once more. Add a new material to this and remove the principal node. Add a principal volume node instead and plug that into the volume input. You can give this a blue tint and you get this really nice effect like there's an atmosphere around the planet. Increasing the density will make the planet look like it has a thicker atmosphere and reducing it will make the atmosphere look thin. This RTX 3090 Ti can use Nvidia's Nano VDB technology, which is a really great rendering tool for path tracing volumetrics in real time. It's nice to be able to dial in settings for volumetrics like this without having to wait for loads of time while the noise clears up. Whoever wins this GPU is getting a really powerful tool. So once you put that all together, you'll end up with an animation that looks something like this. Now this is obviously a fairly simple scene, but it at least gives you a starting point if you've never made a space scene before. Though I've got a feeling that you're going to have to pull the stops out a little bit more than this if you want to win the GPU. Thanks to Nvidia and Scan for making all this possible. Remember to check out the link in the description to see Scan's whole range of RTX Studio devices. They have a really nice selection of laptops, desktops and standalone GPUs for sale. And because it's part of the studio program, you know all of this equipment is really great for creative work. I'll catch you guys in a few days with another video. Until then, take care and good luck.